what we've known as the internet, that's just chapter one. Little tiny, very low cost sensors are being embedded into everything. It's gonna be the chair you're sitting on, it's gonna be the clothes you're wearing, and that's gonna change things. So I was talking to um, a couple of East European entrepreneurs that have created this product. It's called Teddy the Guardian. It's a, it's a fairy teddy bear that you give to your child. Why? Because it's got lots of sensors in the arms. It can tell how stressed your child is, their temperature, all sorts of other things, and you subscribe to a service. And you can get that if you're an anxious parent at work, want to know what's going on, you check on your phone. New business model, new technology empowering this. If you remember Star Trek, Mr. Spock and his tricorder, it can easily, instantly tell you what's wrong with you. Well, we're now in a world where we have tricorders. So this is a company in California called Scanadu that's developed this very low-cost device that's due to go on sale later this year for about 90 or 100 pounds, that you point to your forehead, it takes, you know, heartbeat, blood pressure, all sorts of other metrics. In the sensor world, where everything is connected to the internet, you get really smart ways of rethinking stuff we take for granted. This is Lockitron, a lock that you can control from anywhere in the world through your smartphone. Not a bad idea if you're let letting your place out to a stranger. Um, not every Internet of Things idea is going to change the world. This is called the Milkmaid. It's a jar with sensors that will tell you, send a message to your iPhone when the milk is starting to go sour. We've all been waiting for this. <laughs> but if you think about sensors embedded, connected to the network, Wired did a project um, about what it's going to be like in everyday life. So, you know, you're driving along the street, the taxi will get automatic directions based on your online schedule. The sandwich shop will know that you're coming near, so it will start your order. We've learned that, you know, software can change things. But we haven't yet thought about DNA as software. And so there's another revolution happening at the same time, that we're understanding how to modify DNA and how to code it on a computer and actually have it manufactured. There was a place I went to in California where you can just come in off the street and just start biohacking. And the sorts of things people were doing were taking the bioluminescent DNA from a jellyfish and you know, experimenting with cats and other things. Um, ethical questions, perhaps. Um, but there was a project that went on one of the crowdfunding sites in the summer trying to grow trees that glow in the dark. So the idea is, you've got the bioluminescent DNA, if you splice it into a plant, could we not do away with the need to have street lamps? Well, it just takes these smart, disruptive thinkers. So one of the other things that's happening big this year is a lot of companies are investing heavily in wearable computing. There's companies now, this is called OmSignal, starting to put embedded technology, sensors in your clothes. It tells you, you know, your heart rate, how many steps you've done, even emotional, your mood. This is quite interesting. This is called the NIMI. It's a device that you wear, and it has EEG, and it logs you in, it authenticates you with just a, a move of the wrist. You have a distinct heart pattern, ECG, and why wouldn't you want to log in just by being there rather than having to remember a password or code? We're heading towards simplification. People are going to get very, very disappointed if they have to do any work. It's a human business, legacy we want to leave behind us.